Hey guys, where are we going? To Victoria. To Victoria. You guys excited? Yes, I'm so excited. I can fly. Yeah. I feel like I'm gonna fly with the siren. Yeah. So some of the borders in Australia are finally open. So we're on a trip to visit grandparents. I thought I'd just do a video of a few things that I do that make our trips a little bit cheaper. One is we've decided to drive, so it's seven hours on the road, but with children and having to make stops, it's about 10 hours. Um, now we could fly, but that would probably be like an extra $500, so we're not doing that. Uh, going in the car also means that you can pack a lot more stuff. This way we've already got a car when we arrive at our destination. We don't have to lug around car seats or whatever because they're already there. 10 hours is manageable with four, well, with my four children because they travel really well. So I'm really glad about that. We also have a portable DVD player in the car. So after the first sort of three to four hours, we crack that out and that gets us the rest of the way. And it's fantastic. Right now we're stopped at a park and the kids are enjoying playing. There's Ben running around. Take water bottles with you as you travel. There's plenty of places like this where you can refill your water bottle um, or you can go into a McDonald's or something and quite often they'll be kind and you can just be like, um, could you just refill my water bottle? Or you can ask them just for a cup of water, which they will usually not charge you for. And then you can just refill your water bottle out of that. Don't buy juice or cordial or anything like that because it's expensive it's not good for them and when you're on a long car trip you don't want them drinking too much anyway so if you've given them anything that's exciting and delicious they might just drink it because they want to be drinking something whereas water they'll only drink it if they're actually thirsty and that will cut down the amount of times you have to stop for toilet breaks if you're going somewhere you haven't been before you can always um, find Facebook groups of the area and ask people um, where's a good spot to stop, where there's toilets, where there's um, good places to eat, good parks for the kids, all that kind of thing. But we've done this trip so many times, so we know all the best places to stop. This is another big money saver. So these are the kids' snacks. So everyone's got their name on their bag and in here is their food. Now, I'm usually opposed to kids having too many snacks, but on a car trip, it's a little bit different because they're kind of bored and it gives them something to do is just munch away on stuff. And so, you know, and we've got a mix of, so popcorn, nice big bag of that because we make it ourselves and that's super cheap. Um, you know, little bag of chips, that's a bit of a treat because we're on holidays and they've got veggie sticks which I know they will leave to last but if they're really hungry they will be eaten. We've got some fruit, um, another treat, LP Empire and we've got sandwich. Yeah so there's like heaps of food in there that will do my Benjamin for the whole trip. Um, that is so much cheaper than going to McDonald's because if our whole family went to McDonald's it would be between oh, 40 and 50 dollars probably not to feed everyone. Not is not here. And Ben's in the back there. <laughs> so I've got my little bag of snacks too. And another really big advantage of this is that you don't have to plan your stops based on food or anything like that. And which can be a bit easier not having to get like all the kids out of the car to stop for food. This way they just eat it as we drive or we can stop at a park and have it for a picnic. So save this for parts of the road that aren't bendy because otherwise you'll end up with sick children. But to be honest, even if you stop and eat and then are on a bendy road, the kids will get sick anyway. And some kids just get sick in the car regardless of how hard you try. So this is also just convenient in that you've got all the food for them and they can just eat as they need to and you don't have to worry about where you're gonna stop to get food. I am a tea drinker. I love my tea and on long trips like this I really find it helps me going. Now to buy tea along the road is like three to four dollars for a single takeaway tea. So what I do is I bring my own. So I have this little thing and in here I have my tea bags in the top and the sugar is in the bottom. 
and then I have my trusty little thermos and my milk <laughs> and then my big thermosy thing with my boiling water. Now if I drink about say four cups of tea on this trip if I was paying four dollars for each cup of tea that would be sixteen dollars so let's say you get a really good quality thermos and you're paying like forty dollars for it which I didn't I think I paid like twenty for mine but it pays itself off really quickly you can do the same if you're a coffee drinker you just bring coffee and a spoon instead of your tea bags now we're about seven almost seven hours into our trip even a good quality thermos will not keep your water hot for longer than that not hot enough to brew tea anyway what i am going to do <laughs> is we have we are going to stop at a park just up the road that has barbecue areas and i bought a pot and i'm going to put water into that and boil that water and then I put that water into my large thermos and as I need it, I fill up my little thermos and make my cups of tea. I have found that some takeaway places will give you a cup of boiling water if you ask for it, especially if you are ordering something else there at the same time. But it is a little bit dodgy just to go into a cafe or something and just ask for boiling water and then leave without purchasing anything else so it's not something that I tend to do um, but if I'm really desperate and don't want to pay for a cup of tea I might still do it <laughs> there's my pot of water bubbling away and my little tea station there's about three and a half hours of driving left so the plan from here is to put a DVD on for the kids and just as much as possible drive straight through so we might take a short stop which I say short, but when you're getting four kids out of the car and trying to organize them, like it'll probably turn into about a half hour stop. But hopefully we'll be there in like four hours. This is a great chance for the kids to be able to run around, stretch their legs, me stretch my legs. Okay, I'll fix it. <laughs> and Jessica is now in her pajamas because she threw up all over herself in the car. One of the hazards of driving this trip. <laughs> so here we are at the grandparents house. Um, so these are my in-laws. I am very blessed to have wonderful in-laws that welcome me to their house. Which brings me to accommodation, which can be a very, very expensive part of a holiday. We are also incredibly blessed in that my in-laws have enough room in their house to accommodate all of us. So we sleep here and that's free. So if you're visiting family and there's enough room for everyone to stay, that will save you a lot of money. Even if they only have one or two spare bedrooms, I find if it's for a holiday, people can squish in, they can sleep on the floor. It's, you know, it's something you can do for a few days and it'll be fine. Um, but other alternatives are a caravan park um, with cabins can be fairly reasonable. Um, it will probably be quite small, but you can fit a fair few people in there. If you're doing this kind of thing a lot, it can be really handy to invest in a camper. Um, particularly you can get like pop top campers for quite cheap, as long as you've got a car to tow it obviously. And then if you are visiting family, you can just park in their driveway or whatever, connect up your power and you're good to go. We had a pop top camper for a while, we got it second hand and I think it cost us like $1,500. Um, so considering how much some accommodation can be that will pay for itself within like one or two trips also if there's not a whole lot of room but um family is happy for you to stay with them and the weather is okay and your children are of an appropriate age they can get excited about the idea of sleeping outside in a tent so if you're just on holidays for a few days or a week, you know, visiting family at Christmas or whatever, you can have them sleep outside in a tent. You've still got all your stuff inside, um, but yeah, and they've got their own space and everything. My kids would probably be really happy and excited to sleep outside in tents, but they don't need to. And you can pick up tents really cheap. Um, you can always borrow one, get one secondhand, all that kind of thing. If none of those things really work for you and or particularly if you're going on a holiday where say you don't know anyone like um, like I said we're visiting family but if you're going on like a family holiday somewhere 
uh, Airbnbs are really good. If you've never looked into it, um, I would recommend it. So just go to the Airbnb website. You can get like a whole house for your family. If you're just a single person, you could just get a room. There's lots of different options. You can customize exactly what you're looking for, depending what's available in the area. But yeah, we've used quite a few Airbnbs and we've been really happy with them. And we do find that generally they're a really reasonable price. Oh, another thing about the Airbnbs too, um, if you are getting a whole house, that can be handy in that they've got things like um, washing machines and all that available. And you've got a fully set up kitchen usually which means you can cook your own meals. Um, if you still want to go out to eat, you can, but you've got the option of cooking your own meals, which is a lot cheaper, and they provide a lot of basics like oil and salt and all that. So you sort of just need to get your main things. And some of them do even provide you with breakfast and uh, various different things. So you just look at the various accommodation and see what they offer. Another thing we've done in the past with holidays is we have some friends who live down the coast and they very generously offer us their house when they go away on holidays. So they might be away for a week visiting family or going somewhere else. And so we go down to their house and have a beachside holiday. They don't charge us for that, so that's free. Maybe you've got some friends that live in an area that you're happy to go for holidays. Um, it might not be as nice as, say, a coastal getaway but sometimes it's just nice to go somewhere different and do something a bit different activities are the other big expense now you might be going on a holiday and you're happy to spend a lot on activities and you've budgeted for that so you know go for it and there might be particular activities you really want to do like you've always wanted to go skydiving and so you do that but if you're trying to save and especially with kids there's a few things that we do. So um, this holiday is particularly to visit family. So we're not focusing too much on doing all that many activities. It's more about spending time with relatives. So they've visited their cousins and we're obviously here with grandparents and that's been really nice. But for yesterday, for example, um, they went to the library and they got some books and some DVDs. So that was great and it's free. Um, and then they went to a really, really nice park here that's like huge and had the time of their lives. Um, there was an ice cream van there, but those are incredibly expensive. Um, so what we did one other time, you know, the kids saw an ice cream van and we're all excited about the idea of getting ice cream. You can just go to the supermarket and get a tub of ice cream and some cones. Or what we did in this situation is we went to McDonald's because they've got their like 50 cent ice cream cones I think they're like 70 cents now but yeah that's not very expensive as opposed to paying like four to seven dollars per ice cream per person and yeah activities are fun to do on holidays so I remember one time what we did is we had the idea of going to the aquarium because my son is really into fish but my goodness, then we looked up how much it was going to be to go to the aquarium and it was going to be a few hundred dollars for everyone and that just seemed ridiculous. So what we did is um, we're in like sort of a more city area, so there's lots of stuff to do here. Um, we found a place, it's a pet shop that specializes in fish and like lizards and snakes and all that kind of stuff. And we just went there and looked at all different kinds of fish, all different kinds of lizards. We could ask the pet shop people about things about them and, you know, we learnt some stuff and it was actually really interesting and, you know, it was probably not quite as amazing as going to the aquarium and seeing, like, you know, the sharks and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, we had a great time and the kids really enjoyed it and that was completely free. So it can help just to be a little bit creative and today we're just chilling out around the house so the kids will probably play some games with Nana and um, Ofa, which is what we call Pa, is going to be digging holes and doing a bit of stuff in the yard and so, you know, if the kids want to join in, they can hit trees with sticks and dig some stuff and, you know, do whatever. So you don't have to entertain children 24-7. It's really good for them to just do their own thing and explore and adventure. If they were a little bit older, I'd probably send them on a little walk around the neighborhood um, just to do a bit, bit of exploring. But 
Um, as they're still quite young, I went for a walk with them and that was really fun. We found a park and played there and just looked at the different houses and had a very lovely chat about nothing in particular, but just enjoyed some family time. So yeah, it's a nice relaxing holiday. Singing on the porch chair. <laughs> So on a trip like this, there is always fun new things to discover. We just came down this way because I saw that there were toilets and we found this like totally epic park. <laughs> so the kids are having a nice little run around. That's okay. It's only like eight o'clock in the morning and we've already been traveling for two hours. <laughs> Woo! <Woo-hoo! laughs> Was that good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>